اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم اللہم صلی علی سیدنا مولانا محمد انت بالقلوب و دوائیہ و عفد عبدانی و شفائیہ و نویل افصاری و ضیائیہ و علی آلہ و اصحابہ و بارک و سلیم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم علیکہ سیدی رسول اللہ السلام علیکم و رحمت اللہ تعالی و برکاتہ You are watching Sahih Time and I am your host Hafiz Dr. Nisar Ahmed Marfani Alhamdulillah today we are going to start the fast for the 14th of Ramadan and Allah Almighty says in Quran Majid يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا. Translation from Kanzul Iman Sharif. O mankind, fear your Lord who has created you from a single soul and from it created spouse and from them both has spread the multitude of men and women. Fear Allah in whose name you claim your rights from one another and be mindful of your blood relations indeed Allah is always seeing you Alhamdulillah today's topic is wife and we are very fortunate that amongst us one of the beautiful personality who doesn't need any introduction but definitely I have to introduce him uh, he is the deputy principal of Darlum Pretoria none other than Hafiz Muhammad Ismail Hazarbi Sahab Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Assalamu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Dr. How are you Zarat? Very well alhamdulillah always Jazakal. nice to be with you I mean, Likewise and uh, Hazrat Jazakallah for your precious time you have given to us and today's topic as you know wife before I proceed to that uh, topic I just want to have word, some words from you regarding last two years experience uh, with uh, Sahri time on ITV Alhamdulillah, it has been very, very positive. It has uh, broken many a ground and uh, the message relayed from this forum has been well received. Uh, although it is Sehri time, yes. but I think it is a time when everybody is rejuvenated, they are fresh, they are, you know, uh, totally awake. And whilst the uh, Sehri is being prepared, a message is being relayed which is very welcomed according to the information that I have received and the viewers that have spoken to me individually in their own capacity. Uh, this is what I have what I have received, Alhamdulillah. Mashallah, Jazakallah. Uh, so I would start with how would you in single sentence uh, set the tone for today's topic, Adrat? Well, <laughs> this is a very <laughs> unique topic, a very, uh, 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 you know, uh, though an important topic as well. Yeah. And uh, when we say wife, naturally it stems out of a union and that union is a marriage. That's right. And uh, so there are, two, there are two partners to this. That's and right. uh, you know, we commonly say two spouses here. That's right. So uh, marriage is not when you can live in peace with your wife. That's right. Marriage is when you cannot live in peace without her. That's right. Wow. So that is, that is the basic summary of the whole thing. Beautiful. That when you're with her and you are in peace, there's nothing extraordinary about it. You should be because that's what two spouses are. Hunna libasul lakum wa antum libasul lakum. So you're a garment unto them and they are a garment yes. unto you. And a garment is there for protection. True. A garment is there for so many multiple purposes we can actually say that. So therefore taking that into account, when you're not with your spouse, when you're not with your wife, and then if you are at peace, then there's something wrong. So you should be with, out of peace when you are not with her. That's this right. Is, this is my assumption. So Mahalo, we'll continue this discussion and we'll ask Hazrat from the Sharia point of view as well. But before that, I have to read one Naat Sharif in the praise of our beloved Aqa Mawala Hudud Tajdari Medina, Sayyidina Ahmad Mushtaba Muhammad Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Let's read the salutation upon the best of the creation. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa alihi wa sahabihi wa barik wa sallim. کوئی سلیقہ ہے عرضو کا کوئی سلیقہ ہے عرضو کا کوئی سلیقہ ہے عرضو کا نہ بہت Thank 
किसी का है सान क्यों मत आता किया मुझे को दर्द उल्फत कहाँ थी पुरखता की किस्मत में से करम के कहाँ था का बशीर कहिए नजीर कहिए उन्हें सिराजे पुनीर कहिए जो से बसे वो मेरे आका की जिंदगी है ये सब तुम्हारा करम है आका सो इंशाल्लाह विल आस्क हज़रत टू रिलेट दिस Uh, from the sharia point of view the topic of wife firstly let us look at the criteria given to us by the holy prophet sallallahu taala alaihi wasallam which uh, is the medium for us which is the standard for us and rasulullah sallallahu taala alaihi wasallam has given us four issues that when you go out in terms of selection for a wife there are four criteria basically right. limaliha wali jamaliha wali hasabiha wali diniha wa So these are the four issues. Okay, one selects a wife because of beauty, uh, jamal, limaliha because of her yeah. wealth, lihasabiha of her genealogy or her lineage, walidiniha, and because of din, how ardent and how adherent she is to din. And the qualifying statement of Rasulullah sallallahu taala alaihi wasallam in the closing words of this hadith is. Fadfur bidat al-din. The steadfastness on the din should be given preference. Uh, according to one other narration, there's an addition here: taribat yadak, or else you will be destroyed by your own hands. Taking this into consideration, when we talk of you know the four criteria given, obviously these are attractive criteria. This is what uh, a, a union can be formed on that somebody is very beautiful. and you know you would want to send a proposal but the flip side of this is that a sickness could overcome beauty a major illness could overcome beauty an accident allah forbid but these are issues that can happen right. wealth is there today and cannot be there tomorrow that's right your standing your position in society your lineage your stature your standing in community in society could be there tomorrow uh, today and tomorrow unfortunately it may no longer be there for whatever reasons right. allah knows best but your attachment with deen 
is such a quality in a human being that it never leaves your side. To a believer, to a mu'min, it never leaves your side and is also your companion in the qabr. Will take you up to there and will stand for you on the day of qiyamah as well. So the criteria given to us by Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa is that when you look at the aspect of marriage for yourself or for those to whom you are responsible for your offspring, for example, that you go out looking for marriage partners for them, then you should be you know, mindful of these matters. And as long as you are mindful of this and you know that these are the issues, yes, wealth is a necessary issue in today's day for, you know, for survival. Uh, beauty is appreciated, not necessarily human beauty. When we look around us, Inside the beauty. wonders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the natural beauty that's around us, we seldom sometimes take notice of it. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given that. And if we look at beauty in its true sense of the word, and when we read about the adornment of Jannah, that how beautiful Jannah is going to be. So therefore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us these standards. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has not discounted this criteria. He said this is part of the, 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 the human uh, need and nature. So therefore these things are there. Yet, we have to look at it that what our deen gives us. But as you mentioned, the Prophet has set the criteria. Does she have to fall in all the four categories what Prophet has mentioned? Like as you said, beauty, wealth, it can be changed today. She is wealthy, tomorrow she cannot be. Yes, Depends. so this is, this, is, this is the way where you go out in choosing your partner. For what example, the hasab? Hasab is also there. And hasab is, is, is something which is very important. Yes. And if you, if you are, look, in traditionally, if we go back and we look at our, our lineage and yeah. where we basically emerge from, uh, you know, we would be able to look at it. And obviously, hasab is something which is closely guarded. That's and right. it, is, it is correct. And therefore, we find that this was traditional even from amongst the Quraysh. Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala wasallam emerged from the tribe of Quraysh. Uh -huh. So this existence was there. And we can see uh, Sayyida Khadijatul Kubra radiallahu ta'ala anha, the noble lady from the Quraysh tribe. Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa looked at Hasab at that point in time. And we can understand from here that this is an important factor in the selection process. So these are the other criteria for your selection process. But together with all of this, uh, the important criteria should be the one that overshadows the other criteria is the criteria of one who is steadfast on their deen. Subhanallah. Uh, we have to continue this topic on the second session before we uh, proceed towards the question and answer. I just want to ask you one more question. As you mentioned about the hasab, does, does it apply only to this immediate family member? For example, if you're marrying a woman, you can look at the mother's lineage, the family, or you have to carry on all the way up. They dis where they are descending from, where the, 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 the lineage goes up till the end. Forefathers and then their forefathers. Does it apply on everyone or is it hasab from the immediate family, like your mother or your grandmother, that's all? Uh, look, basically what we need to take into account, because if you go you know, beyond father, grandfather, great-grandfather, we even forget the names then. We yes. can't even remember yes. those names. Yeah. But you, if you go back to you know, two, three generations, a lineage can be established already from there. The nobility of the standing of that family through a hasab point of view, from a lineage point of view, is already established and by lineage will be counted from both father and mother? Yeah. Or only father or uh, only mother? No, according to tradition of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu uh, you will be called on the day of Qiyamah by the name of your father. father. So father is ultimately very important. And according to, you know, when it comes to naming of the child also, it is stated that you should give the name and then attach the father's name to that. Subhanallah. See, Hazrat has mentioned so nicely the four criteria, and then beside those four, four criteria, the most important thing is your steadfast on deen, which is the most important criteria in, uh, nowadays. We, we, we just ignore this, and we unfortunately, we just look at the wealth and the beauty of a woman. Yeah, this is very important, but we have to uh, see the family and the lineage also and the, the woman who is steadfast on the deen. And definitely, this is the most important country Hazrat has mentioned. We'll continue after the break. We have to take a short break. We'll be right back. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.
शान तो शाना सब बढ़िया सुबह Welcome back, dear viewers. We have amongst us Hazrat Hafiz Muhammad Ismail Hazari Sahab, the Deputy Principal of Darulum Pretoria. Hazrat was actually uh, explaining about the steadfastness of a woman as, as in the form of wife. Hazrat, you were saying something before the break. Ji. What I wanted to say is we mentioned the four criteria. Right. Okay. We talk of wealth, we talk of beauty, we talk of the lineage, and we talk of the steadfastness on deen. But bearing in mind, 
with none of these criteria, beauty cannot stop you from being a practicing Muslim. That's right. Neither can your wealth prohibit you from that. That's Neither right. can your lineage prohibit you from that. So possessing these other criteria and qualities would just be an added bonus. It doesn't mean that we got to regard that. It just just regard it as a temporary feature. It's going to be there today. It's going to be. It's going to disappear tomorrow. Yes, it is by the will of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala that He can make that to continue for as long as He so desires, and we have no hand in that whatsoever. Right. Yeah. But if somebody has wealth and they are able to practice their deen in accordance with the beautiful teachings of Rasulullah Sallallahu Taala Alaihi Wasallam, then that person is a successful person. And if somebody whose beauty supersedes another person's beauty that is also by the selection of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and if such a person goes out and carries out the activities of his or her deen correctly then such a person would also can become an ideal to somebody else so and you know so this this is this uh, uh, point that i wanted to make just okay, before mashallah and now we have like 10 to 12 question but i'm very sure in the next 6 minutes is not going to be possible but i have already chosen some of them which are very important in this uh, today's era and the time uh, hazrat the question came is it necessary for a wife to look after the in-laws this is an important issue i i, I think this is uh, you know very important can be controversial sometimes as well and uh, can be a bone of contention between okay. spouses as well if we look at it from the aspect of sharia directly there are no bounds and limitations on the woman to look after in-laws. the in-laws in other words her husband's parents. parents but if she does so willingly and you know comes out to do something you know for them then i think here they shouldn't be you know even use created that this was done and not done properly this was done it could have been done this way why did you do this uh, uh, attitudes should not come in here okay but instead of attitudes if we can bring in gratitude here Hmm. and substitute the attitude with gratitude and then we would be able to look at this entire situation very much differently because then you are creating an environment of all encompassing you are creating an environment in an in an household in a household where there is appreciation and when someone is appreciated it's normal common sense if a child does something wonderful in school and gets a pat on his back or her back from the teacher then the child would strive to want to do better that's right very much the same situation here that a woman often wants to make the house want to mend situations and she leaves behind everything she leaves behind all kinds of relationships to come and to be with her husband and in doing so she accepts the relationships that come with it now comes the role here of the other role players from the husband side okay and this needs to be where i say that the attitude needs to be replaced with gratitude but i have another question during this question i just uh, it came in my mind for example if a woman has been forced to look after the parents and if she doesn't that's what sharia say if she doesn't it's fine she is not bound to do it, as you mentioned that yes. if she has been forced to do that and based on that if she doesn't and she she get threatened that i'm i'm going to give, give divorce to you just i'm giving an example is it going to be the right way to divorce someone only based on this that she is not looking after your parents we, we, we can take this to the situation and uh, you know come down to the point if we say you know let's cut down straight to the bone whose right is it at that point in time hmm. is it the wife's right to look after her in-laws or is it the husband's duty who becomes duty bound to serve the parents naturally it's the husband's husband, duty yeah, yeah. and if for some reason be it because of attitude be it because she has her own children yeah. be it because of other reasons yes. she has to cut the children school back yeah. etc whatever yeah. Yeah. or prepare the pot of food for the afternoon or for That's the evening right. whatever yeah. her chores are be that as it may the responsibility rests with the husband and then under such circumstances 
it is necessary for him to find an alternate source of arrangement if he is unable to do it himself. Okay. Okay, so I think that uh, clarifies the matter as well. And then also one question came, the relation which became mehram after marriage. For example, the mother-in-law, she become your mehram. Mm -hmm. What other relations which can be counted as mehram? Is the father-in-law also mehram in the same way the mother-in-law is? Uh, there are multiple issues that will emerge from here. And okay. I think in, uh, you know, for us to understand this thing, firstly, the definition is important. And... Uh, Mahram is the one, who, you can the one who cannot get married, yeah. you know, so that becomes your mahram. And, and this, is, this is indeed highly important for us to consider. In the case of the uh, mother-in-law, that becomes like evident, you know, yeah. she remains the, the uh, you know, mahram yeah. ever since then. Right, yeah. Okay, so anyways, uh, because the time is uh, not, uh, we have only one and a half minutes left and definitely the topic is quite vast and we have like five more questions left. Unfortunately, I have to conclude this program and definitely we have to take the pearls of wisdom uh, from Hazrat -e Hafiz Muhammad Islam, Hazar Ismail Hazari Sahib. Before I conclude with the uh, last wordings from Hazrat, I just want to mention something for tomorrow. The topic will be uh, on the 15th of Ramadan. We are approaching the half month, definitely. And the topic is relation. And we will continue this uh, question and answer which, which uh, we have left now. Uh, the question will be asked to Maulana uh, Aslam Sarwari Sahab from Sultan Bahu, inshallah. He will be available tomorrow for us. And the topic will be relation the same time. And we'll take the words, words of wisdom and then we'll con conclude with the program as well. I think it's important for us when we look at the uh, spousal relationship that we right. see what is the situation here. And the situation needs to be abundantly clear that, for example, you have a business partnership. And your business partnership is rested on, on something, that as long as we can move this towards excellence, our goal is one. And what is our goal? Our goal is that the profits need to increase. Similarly, if the, if the husband and wife can understand one aspect, that they have a common goal, and the common goal is to be subservient to the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that becomes the common goal. Because that is higher than, than the two of them. And then that has been modeled and exampled by Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. If they take that into account and place that above themselves and work towards that as their goal in life, then there is no room for any of this. Subhanallah. So in other words, the conclusion is you have to find a solution for every single issue. And solution is always there, as it has mentioned, inshallah. We'll continue uh, next time. We don't have enough time, inshallah, until tomorrow. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.